Hi friends, today I want to talk about something Jesus revealed to me in a revelation and also in a dream when I was asking him about the first heaven and the new heaven. It says in a few places in the gospel that the old heaven, the first heaven, was rolled up like a scroll and there came a new heaven and a new earth. So I asked the Lord about this. I said, if there was a first heaven, was I there? Were we there? Because in Jeremiah it said, before you were in your mother's womb, I knew you. So I was inquiring on the Lord. I was really curious about this first heaven. And I asked him, well, if there was a first heaven, why did it have to be do away with, done away with? What was wrong with it? What happened that caused you to need to create a new heaven? So after long periods of prayer and meditation, and over the next few days, I would just be wondering about this, just be hoping for the Lord to reveal it to me. It was really, it wasn't eating at me, but it was really weighing on my mind and weighing on my heart. heart. Um, like what? Why? Why did this happen? What must have caused it? I was coming up with my own theories and catching myself and saying, well, that's just what I think. I wonder what the truth is. I wonder what the Lord is going to show me about this. Sometime soon, uh, I went to bed and I had a powerful dream. Now, in the dream, I was another creature. I was human shape, but I just remember I was like this, like running around, playing, jumping in the water, jumping out of the water, kind of like an animal playing around when you've seen like young creatures like a seal or like maybe a young cub or the young animals in nature they're so playful i was a lot like that in fact a lot more like that than even animals really playful and that's all i knew it was just how to have a really good time. I was just in the water, out of the water, swimming fast, jumping out of the water, landing. And I was in this area, which I called, now I call, in the dream, it was my terrain. This was my play area. I didn't want to leave it. There was more areas, but this was my habitat, let's say, my desired and accepted territory. And there was other people I was playing with too, or people like creatures. Um, so they were, they were jumping around. And I remember I went up to one of them really closely like this. And I noticed his eye, his pupil in his eye. This I remember, I remember the whole dream, but this was something that stuck out. The whole pupil was open. So imagine there's no white. It's open all the way, kind of like a lemur. Or there are certain animals in nature that have their pupil all the way open. And my eyes were all the way open and I was fully feeling nothing but bliss, heavenly bliss and pleasure. Just jumping around, playing around. <clears throat> now, the dream changes all of a sudden. And I'm looking at the whole thing from on top, like from a bird's eye view. I'm looking and now I'm in my own human Alex mind perception. And I think to myself, hey, wait a second, that's where I was. This was the area I was playing in. Boy, that was so much fun. And I was just looking at it and there was a bunch of few people playing around. And I remember while I was in the actual dream, I thought I was going really fast, jumping out. It was this amazing thing. But now looking at it from my view, it wasn't all that amazing. Like there was like water and some rocks. But the people in it, they weren't moving all that fast. They were like kind of going a little bit, going up and plopping over. I'm sorry if anyone takes offense, but it almost seemed like they were mentally ill or retarded in a way where what they think is happening and what's really happening wasn't the same thing. But the perception while I was in it with the perception was extraordinary. But the reality when I was looking at it was really not all that impressive. Um, 
But I knew what I felt was amazing. And even though it didn't look all that impressive, what was going on actually through the eyes of the creature that I was, was heaven. Now, I'm looking at the setup where there's this play area. And all of a sudden, the camera or my view pans forward and I see a huge mountain full of areas like this. Thousands upon thousands of little areas, tens of thousands. And I just, once I see it, I see just maybe millions and millions of people all just screaming, ah, like having fun, playing, waterfalls here, rivers here. All of them just having a blast, a great old time. And I think to myself, this is Mount Zion. This is the mountain of God. This is, this is the first heaven. I just have this inclination, this revelation in the dream. This is what it was like. All the kids were locked into a perception where they could really enjoy. Now, there's a verse in Romans 1, 2, 5. Yeah. I might be using it out of context, but the whole point is it says they served the creation rather than the creator. They served the lie and they served created things rather than the creator. Now, I remember thinking, well, what's the problem with this? You know, sure. It was kind of weird where I was looking at it with a sober human mind and it wasn't all that impressive as far as like they weren't running and really jumping out but while I was the creature my perception was tweaked out in a way where to me it was the way it seemed. So I couldn't find a problem in it because it felt so good I actually wanted to go back into that body and to feel it and immediately I went back. Now I'm in that body again and I'm just like oof, 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 just loving it right in the water, out of the water, I see other people there. And I start playing around with one of the other human, human looking creatures. And by the way, we were completely naked, but we had no idea what nakedness was. There was no pain, nakedness, thirst, hunger. It was like hunger wasn't even a thing. I was fully satisfied as if my energy was never going down, ever. Unlike Earth where you move around, you get hungry, you need to eat. It wasn't like that there. So I'm playing around and all of a sudden I look and I see someone on a hill. He's just standing there like this. I just remember his eyes were so big and he had this look on his face with joy that like I'd never seen before. It was just like, it was, and I knew when I, I asked myself, First I looked at him in, in the dream and I thought to myself, who is this? Who's this standing there looking at us, taking joy in us playing? And as soon as I said that, he read my mind and he looked right at me and he communicated to me through a word that came into me, he said, I'm your father. How could you not know who I am? How could you forget me? How could you serve the creation and have so much fun with all of it for so long and, and, and forget me? And I felt him sobbing inside. I heard him go something like, uh, like he was hurting. And I heard him moaning with pain that I had pained his heart, that I had forgotten him, that I loved heaven and the water and the rock and the other beings I loved them so much more than him for so long I had forgotten him and he looked at me and he communicated to me again that he's going to end this and I got angry I got angry for two reasons number one this was going to end my fun Number two, I was, I was not really angry, but it was once I learned he was God and I was the creation, there was a sense of he was greater than me. And I didn't like that. I didn't like the fact that 
hey, he's greater than me. I want to be at his level. I don't, not that I want to be greater than God or why is God, I love God being greater than me. But in the dream, it was, there was a need to be at his level, to be one with him as far as, it was clear to me he loved me more than I loved him. And I couldn't love him. That's what I got angry at. Why are you mad at me for not being able to love you exactly as you love me? It's not my fault. And it wasn't my fault. He knew that. And this was all communicated telepathically. But it was a problem. Now there's a verse in the Old Testament. He was talking to Israel through the prophets. And he said, he said something to the account of, I gave you everything. I led you out of the desert. I thought you would love me. I thought you would call me father. But instead, talks about they turn to sin and idols and to other gods. But it says, I thought you would love me. I thought you would call me father. I hoped you would call me father, but you didn't. To me, that was a microcosm of what happened in the first heaven where God created a situation and He gave everything to the creation and the creation didn't appreciate it. So that's what it's about, folks. It's about we're born as babes, as children, and we have a measure of the Holy Spirit. When we believe in Jesus, that, that Holy Spirit comes to life in us. And then we have to get to the same level as the Father as far as love. If the Father loves you more than you love Him, there's going to be a problem in heaven. We have to be built up in love so much that we can safely say in heaven that while we were on earth, we came to a point where we loved our God exactly as He loved us. He'll give you that love to do this. You're not going to be able to do it on your own. I'm not going to be able to do it on my own. That's where sin becomes a really, really big problem. Sin stops you from loving God. Sin makes you angry at yourself. It makes you disappointed and brings in all this negativity. That's why judgment has to come upon sin. I believe, and it's been shown to me by Jesus Christ, that the son of perdition is a spirit. It's the spirit of sin in every human being. He exists in the mind and he exists in the body too. You got the Holy Spirit in here with the spirit of sin working in your body. All sickness, ailments, everything bad comes from the spirit of perdition, the son of perdition, who is a living spirit, who is sin in all mortal flesh. Sin must be condemned in mortal flesh. The devil must be judged in you. The devil must be put to death in you. That's why we get the baptism of fire, to literally punish him. You'll feel it. I felt it too, because I was sharing a vessel with the devil and the Holy Spirit. But by no means can Jesus enter a flesh and a mind that's possessed by both a human being and the devil. One of them has to go. Obviously, it's going to be the devil. You got your spirit. You got your soul. You got your flesh and your spirit in your body is connected to Satan. That's why you hear voices or you get attacks from your brain. That's why you get illnesses in your body. That's why you have a, you have a temperamental attitude. Not all of you, but the, well, those of you who do, that's the reason you do. It's because you're not your own. You're sharing your consciousness with quote unquote, the son of perdition in you. You have essentially two minds, yours and the evil one's mind, and they're at war with one another. You want to please God, but you can't. So again, I ask, as I do in all my videos, that you pray in the name of Jesus Christ and ask the Lord, thank the Heavenly Father, bow your knee to the Heavenly Father, and ask the Lord to allow you to be shown a vision or a dream or a revelation received from him about this teaching that you can have the Holy Spirit in you but there's also another spirit in you waging war against God and righteousness and exalting himself and calling himself 
the fullness of God and it's not the fullness of God. This is a, a demonic spirit, the Antichrist spirit. Antichrist is actually another word for in the place of, in the stead of Christ, in his stead, in his place. And the Lord showed me and literally told me that the human brain is possessed by the devil, that the Holy Spirit lives here, but in the mind, the devil rules. And there's confusion and there's justification of sins, that people think, oh, I can drink alcohol or I can do this. Everything seems okay because that's the deception. That's a deceiving spirit. Please do not be deceived. The only way you're not going to be deceived is by asking Jesus Christ to show you directly face to face. Be bold. I did. I said, Lord Jesus, do I have this mind of Antichrist up here? There's something evil I feel in my mind. Are you in my mind? I don't have the mind of Christ. I don't think I do. You know, I've heard of the mind of Christ. Paul said he had it. Ask him to show you a dream. I had other Christians do this. People see a dream sometimes. They say, oh, I saw my brain come out and get big. And it was a bunch of rooms. And I went in and right in the middle there was a seat with the devil sitting on it. And, or something like that. And they get really scared. God's not trying to condemn you. He's trying to bring you to the truth. Unless you admit what's going on, you're not going to be able to sincerely ask for the mind of Christ. So that's why I say, if you have the mind and spirit of Jesus Christ, ask Him to come to you with a confirmation so that you'll know for 100% sure. I don't trust anyone's feelings, not even my own. If I don't trust my own thoughts and feelings, and I ask Him to show me a vision and clearly say the words, Jesus Christ of Nazareth says, the answer that I'm asking for to be given. If I don't trust my own feelings and my own thoughts, why should I trust your feelings? Why should you trust your feelings and thoughts? If Satan is in you deceiving your heart and mind, he's giving you his feelings and thoughts. So right there, you're taking a huge risk. Our God said in Jeremiah 33, ask me and I will show you. It says in Numbers 12, six through eight, I come to my prophets in dreams, visions and dreams and I show myself to them, I reveal myself to them in visions and dreams. Also says in 2 Corinthians 12.1 that I will go on to more visions and to more dreams from the Lord Jesus Christ. So don't take any chances, friends. Declare a fast, fast and pray. Ask Jesus where you stand. Make sure you leave this world with the full measure of the Spirit of Christ, as it says in Ephesians 4.13. So may Jesus Christ bless you and bring you to the fullness of the Spirit. God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen.